Hi, it's Margaret. It is downright frigid today. The temperature I think is around three degrees and the wind chill is minus one degree Celsius. It is cold. However, I do have one task on my list that I have been meaning to tick off all summer long and actually two tasks. Number one is to finish up the drip irrigation in this bed right here by the front walkway. And number two is to mulch it. Now, if you recall a video I did a few months ago when I planted up a bunch of hostas, this is the bed I'm talking about. And the original plan was that I was going to finish up the drip on it, finish up the mulch on it, it was gonna be good to go. The problem was, or not the problem, but what ended up happening was that we ended up getting a ton of rain this summer. So putting in the drip wasn't really a priority and I didn't want to mulch it until the drip was done. Here we are, like approaching the end of November and it was still not done and I have a ton of mulch, well not a ton, a little pile now on the driveway that really needs to get out of there. We don't want it or my husband doesn't want it there over the winter and so I thought you know what I'm just gonna get this done come hell or high water or freezing cold temperatures which is obviously the case. Let's go take a look to see what that bed looks like now. So here's the bed and all of the hostas have obviously died back so the first thing I'm actually going to do before I do anything else is I'm going to just get rid of all of that dead hosta foliage because it does get a little bit slimy. So the rest of the things in this bed including this astilbe right here, there's a hardy geranium right there, all of that I am going to leave. I generally like leaving up when I can um, any of the perennials. They're good places for beneficials in the winter. They also help protect the crown of the plant over the winter and they provide a little bit of seasonal interest as well instead of just a bunch of bare soil. So I am going to leave that, um, but you'll see back here, there's an area right along there. We actually had a blockage in one of our gutters. And so the rain basically was creating almost like a trench. So there is literally no mulch left in that area. So that area needs a good top up. We did fix the blockage. Everything's good now. So we don't have issues with that anymore, but yeah, that'll be good to take care of. And I I think that is about it. So I'm going to get started first by just pulling up all of this hosta foliage. Oh, and one more thing. You can see I have the bones of the drip already installed. So these are the main lines. And what I'll be doing is I'll be running just a quarter inch line from each of the main lines to the individual hostas here. And hopefully I will get all of them. I'm pretty sure I can still see where all of them are. And if I end up missing one, I can just add it next year as well. I will also be putting some uh, drip to, of course, all of the other perennials in this bed.
Okay, so I have finished cleaning up all of the hosta foliage and I did leave this guy here sticking up because I don't have a label there and so I want to make sure I don't end up missing it and I know exactly where it is when I put the drip. I do have another one up there that I did take the foliage off of before I kind of thought, oh, how am I going to find it if I don't have a label there? But I know more or less where that one is. Not too worried about that. And I think that is good. So I have my drip irrigation supplies right here, and I am going to be using one gallon per hour emitters on this. So let me just give you a quick rundown of exactly what I'm gonna do here. So here is the uh, tubing that I'm gonna use. It's one quarter inch solid drip tubing. And what's gonna happen is one end is going to be attached to the main line tubing, the large tubing, and then the other end of it is gonna have an emitter that will be placed right where the hosta is. So here's the emitter, and it's a one gallon per hour emitter. Now you'll notice that on one side it has a pointy end, and on the other side it has an end with kind of a hole in the middle. The end with the hole in the middle, that's the end that's um, coming out like that's the end that's facing the plant this one with the pointy end is the one that's going to go into the quarter inch tubing so it is going to go basically like this into the quarter inch tubing and it will be pressed into the tubing itself the other end of the tubing will be cut so that it's the perfect length to go from the hosta to the mainline tubing and that end will get what's called a barbed uh, connector or a barbed coupling and this is what that looks like and basically both ends are exactly the same one end goes into the quarter inch tubing like this it gets pushed all the way in and the other end goes into the mainline tubing. I will be creating a hole in the mainline tubing and then pushing this into the hole. So this is what I use to create the holes. And it has a little uh, hole maker there. You kind of just put it where you want it on the mainline tubing. You kind of give it a good push and a couple of twists and it makes a hole right in the tubing. And lastly, I have these little guys, they're stakes. And what I'm going to do is the end with the emitter that's going to go next to the hosta, I want to make sure that it's in the proper position. And so it's just going to quickly uh, go into the stake like this. And then the stake will go into the ground so that the emitter is in the perfect spot. One last thing, actually. The tubing here, sometimes it can get a little stiff and it's hard to put those connectors in. And what I do and is super helpful is I get a cup of boiling water, uh, not boiling at the time but I boil the water put it in a cup and bring it outside and then I just put the end of the tube in that water for you know like 10 seconds or something like that and it softens it up just enough where getting that coupling in is not a problem at all and because it's so cold today I'll probably have to go in and out a few times I'm thinking because the water will cool down although I am going to use an insulated cup so that will help a little bit in terms of keeping it warm so Okay, let's get going. So I'm gonna do one close-up one and then I'm just gonna get everything done after that so that you can exactly see what I'm doing. So here is the Abiqua Drinking Gourd Hosta and the crown is actually right over here. So first thing I'm gonna do is measure out what I need for the drip line here. So I'm thinking I'm probably gonna put it around here. So it's gonna be cut right here. I'm just gonna cut it. I just use an old set of pruners to do all this cutting. It, they actually form part of my irrigation kit. So this is how big of a line I need for this. Not very big. So then I'm actually, here's my little cup of water. I'm just going to put this in the water for a little bit like that. And in the meantime, I am going to do my hole right there. Now, the one thing about these guys is that this little hole here, which is what punches out the hole in the mainline tubing, sometimes gets plugged up with um, plastic from the tubing. So all you need to do is a little um, paper clip, 
I just kind of bent it and then you kind of poke it through. I think there's a few pieces of uh, plastic in here, which is why it's a little hard to poke. There, okay. I don't think I uh, got the plastic out of this in a while, so you kind of see here, there were a couple of little uh, black bits there stuck inside here. That makes it a lot easier to punch the hole. So anyhow, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a hole using the punch tool in the main line facing out. I don't wanna put it on the top here because I don't wanna have to bend my main line. I want the line going straight from here out. So I'll do it in the side and it does take a little bit of effort, but that's okay. And there we go. And that is punched out. So let me just show you what that looks like. Okay, so you can see here, there's the hole. So now we take one of uh, the barbed connectors. These are the ones that are just the same on both ends. And you just kind of push it in, kind of twist, push until it's all the way in like that. And now this goes in the hole. Same thing. You push it all the way in. And you'll hear a pop when it goes in. There we go. And that's all the way in now. I should have actually done this before I put it into the main line, but that is okay. So there you go. That softened up a little bit and now here is our emitter the one with the hole is on this side and the pointy end here is on that side there and so the pointy end will be going in here easy peasy now the last thing see how quick this was last thing is I'm just going to put a stake uh, here to hold up the tubing. And I'm actually going to put this quite a bit higher than the ground. A lot of times I'll put it, if I already have the area mulched, I'll put it kind of already on top of the mulch. But because I'm planning on putting mulch in this area, I want this emitter to actually be on top of the mulch. The actual lines themselves, I will put under the mulch, but the emitter, I want it to be on top of the mulch because I do have arborvitae trees around here and those roots can get pretty aggressive. And what I don't want is for the roots to start growing into the actual um, emitters. So, and that's it. So now I am just gonna get the rest of these done. I am done. The drip irrigation lines are going to each of the hostas in addition to a few other things like this Campanula, there's an Astilbe, there's a Hellebore over there. And uh, yeah, so two things. Number one, this area here, this big area actually has a huge clump of hostas that I quite like. They have been here since we moved here uh, I don't even know how long ago, 14 years ago, something like that. I have never irrigated them. And I think because this is kind of a shady spot 
um, it's never been a problem. So I am not going to be putting any kind of drip in this area where I have these established hostas. They do just fine without it. So the other thing is this guy here. I actually made a mistake. Normally I put my tags behind the hostas. This one happened to be in front of the hosta and I didn't notice. So when I was cutting the line, I actually cut it so that it ended right here. And I figured, oh, the host is probably somewhere in that area. And then I realized, nope, it's right over there. So what I just did is I cut the line right in the middle. I added one of those couplers, the same one that I put into the main line. I put one end into here, one end into a new section of the uh, solid drip. And then I just have the emitter there right where the hosta is. And lastly, this is the area where I had the hosta. I took the foliage off and I didn't really know where it was. I kind of looked around. I couldn't really find the crown. I know I do have a hosta there. So what I did is I just did a line going like this and I'm going to leave it visible like that so that next year I can adjust it properly to where that hosta actually is. Now I think I'm going to go inside, have some lunch, and then I have to come back out and get that mulch done. Okay, so here is the pile of mulch that I have to deal with and I have a feeling this is not going to make that big of a dent in this pile but we'll see so what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to put the mulch into these buckets because when I'm going into beds like that that are kind of tight with a lot of perennials in it I feel like I have more control if I'm kind of dumping like this with buckets than if I'm bringing a whole wheelbarrow full and just dumping it on top of areas potentially I don't want it going so um what I'm basically going to do is going to fill the buckets, wheelbarrow it over, dump it in the uh, bed, and hopefully this won't take too long. And we are done and it looks awesome. Now, when I put the mulch down, I didn't, um, or I tried not to anyway, put it on the crown of the plant like you see there. Um, but this mulch is going to settle as well over the winter. Um, but I tried as best I could. It's not a huge deal, I guess, for hostas if it's a little bit on top. But uh, yeah, it looks amazing. So the only thing I have left to do, which I'm not going to do right now, but I'll probably do later on this evening evening um, or later on this afternoon, I guess, is uh, this area here. I am going to be covering that drain pipe um, with mulch. It was covered many moons ago. <laughs> And over the years, it's just kind of gotten less and less. And, and normally I don't even see it because the dog would, but yeah, I think I'm going to get that covered. But other than that, I think it looks pretty good. Let's go take a look at that mulch pile. Here's the rest of the mulch pile, so a little bit of a dent. Um, so I definitely want to use the rest of this up. I just have to kind of think what's more of a priority. There are a lot of places that this can go um, in the raised bed area. The border there needs um, added mulch, although I do already have a couple of piles of mulch in there that I am going to be spreading in the next little while. And uh, yeah, in the walkway, I think I can probably use some as well. So I'm not sure. Anyhow, maybe we'll just dump it into uh, a spot and then have it ready for the spring. That's another alternative, the lazy, you know, alternative and also the alternative if it gets really cold, which I think today is probably going to be the warmest day in the next week. So I'm not sure how much stuff I'm going to get done outside. Anyhow, that's it for today. So thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you next time. Bye.